Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Jamie Feist. This video is also on my website, celloprofessor.com. I teach at Central Michigan University. Okay, let's get right to it. We're talking sautier bow stroke today. It's in the spiccato family of bow strokes. All right, it's a fast spiccato. Not to be confused with the slow spiccato, which has more of a U shape to it. My teacher called this um, controlled spiccato. I think she got it from Starker, I think. Not totally sure. All right. The sautier bow stroke is, it actually has the loop the other way. All right. It's more of this sort of bounce. Ba, 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 ba. All right. That's the difference. One is fast and one is slow. We use this a lot in Mozart, the controlled spiccato. Sautier is more of like a virtuoso bow stroke. So this has both controlled and sautier, right? Do you notice that? So you have, that's the sautier. That's controlled. Right? Or I mean, you could even pick, um, like sometimes I'll use this little tune when I'm teaching it because it's not really that hard for the left hand. The um, scherzo from one of the Suzuki books. Know that one? That wasn't quite good. Okay. You get the idea. That's the sautier bow stroke. Now, let's talk about how to do it. Jumping right in. First thing you need to develop is a forearm detaché stroke. Notice I'm using my forearm. If you try to do this with your whole arm, I wish you the best. There, I'm trying to do it with my whole arm. I'm already tired. I'm, I'm done. All right, just from that little bit. Can't move very fast either. So you want to be able to just move part of your arm. So the elbow's the hinge. We would say the active motion is in the forearm, to use Paul Rowland terminology. For you Paul Rowland fans out there, I certainly am. And then you need a passive motion in your wrist, a passive motion. I'm not moving my wrist actively, if that makes any sense. I have a, some other videos on this, right? It's not an active motion, it's passive. The forearm moves and the wrist is simply relaxed and I allow it to move. Okay, here's some exercises. So those are the first two things. Excuse me, I got a pencil down here. Grab a pencil. I have a whole video on, on uh, developing a relaxed wrist that you would use not only in this bow stroke, but in others. Hold a pencil. Well, first of all, do this. <laughs> Get this down. That's the easy part. And by the way, you have to pronate your hand a little bit to the left to do this because that's the direction the wrist moves most easily. It doesn't move too easily side to side, right? It moves very easily that way. Okay, we're going to hold the pencil. I'm going to turn my hand a little bit to the left, a little bit of pronation, and I'm going to try doing this with a pencil. You may find that this is suddenly more difficult. All right, it's like, oh, how come it's so much harder? Like here I can go like this and here I can go like this. Well, problem is anytime you use your finger flexors, this side of your forearm here, right, muscles on this side of your forearm will contract some and keep your wrist from moving, right? This is very handy when you go to reach for a cup of coffee. Because when I go like this, you don't want your whole wrist to go, right? Because all these tendons pass over your wrist here. So they contract and pull your fingers. It would also pull your wrist if it weren't for your muscles on the top side of the forearm sort of holding on up there or your muscle holding on. Okay, so you actually have to retrain your arm to allow it. You have to train it to relax up here to do this. Right here, this exercise might take you a while. Don't get discouraged. Be patient. There's a whole video on this, by the way. I'm just giving the shortened version right now. So you may want to go check it out. I'll link, link it in the description. All right, so now what you do is loop your fingers around your bow and see if you can see if you can get your wrist and hand and just sort of relax. So I'm forearm detacheing. I've got a relaxed wrist. I've got a little pronation. Those are the steps for that. That may take time. You may be looking at months before it finally lets go, uh, will we'll let go because it, it, it's so ingrained in us to sort of, as soon as we hold something that this just isn't not going to relax, right? Okay, so that's, that's, those are the basic motions. Next is the angle, right? So if I do a regular form detaché, it's just horizontal, 
we need some vertical or we're not going to get any jump we need some jump and that means vertical how do we do it i'm going to drop my elbow down and i'm going to move my arm at a 45 degree angle this will give some vertical and some horizontal both that also gives me the right this isn't that convex concave for controlled spiccato convex good so it'll just happen automatically you'll get that that proper um loop at the top if you go with the 45. okay what this means is you're going to be playing on the left side of the string on the down bow and the right side for the up bow down bow left side up bow right side in fact you can even do this kind of exercise if you want to kind of feel that right okay so my teacher Lorian Laufman used to have us do this again I think she may have gotten it from Starker okay good so there's that now another exercise for that is this so I'm just gonna make my A here with my first finger down bow on the A, up on the D, that does the same thing. When I get it going, you're going to notice if you look at the tip here, do you see it? It's going to kind of go up and down. The slow motion is this again, left, right, left side of the string, right side. Again, the exercise is A string, D string, but I got my first finger on the A. It's a good exercise. Then you get your sautier. Now, I want to make one other comment about this. And that is, I think of a sautier more as a spring up rather than a bounce. Okay, so it kind of springs out. Sort of like if you compress a spring and then let it go, it'll jump out right from the floors or whatever it is right so that's how I think of it so sautier is more like the bow goes in out it's springing up from it's a little louder too which is kind of nice you know if you got to project a spiccato because spiccato is a little hard to project if you're thinking of it as a bounce when it really leaves the string if you think of it as springing from the string, you can get a little more volume out of it. See what I mean? All right, you picking up what I'm putting down or am I talking gibberish here? Okay? Spring from, from. And that also can be really handy uh, for like orchestral playing. You know, if you have something you want to make it sound bouncy, it's sort of a, everyone's staying in the string. But it's the same technique, but it, it stays in. It's got some bite. See what I'm talking about? All right. And for starters, you know, I like to use, I, I, I demonstrated that um, Suzuki tune. That's actually, even for like players who are a little more advanced, you know, but they, they don't have a sautier yet, I'll I'll go back and just pull out the Suzuki book and do the scherzo from that, you know, because it, it does work pretty well. And it's not that hard for the left hand if you're already, you know, good cellist, but just need to work on your sautier. That's a good one to do. You don't have to do necessarily like Elgar concerto or, you know, Haydn concerto or something. Okay, that's basically what I got. That's basically what I got. Let's recap. Forearm. Slight pronation in the in the forearm and the wrist. So forearm detaché. Turn a little this way. Back of the hand a little to the left. Practice getting that loose like this. Try it with the pencil. Grab the bow. Try it with the bow. 45 degree angle to the string. Down bow's on the left side of the string. Up bow's on the right side of the string. spring out of the string instead of just bouncing. You'll get a little more oomph out of it. It's bite. Okay, that's all I got, folks. All right, subscribe and like if you could. It's really helpful. Come visit my site too, celloprofessor.com. All right, see you later.